Welcome to section 6 of Immunology Pharmacology. In this section, we'll be discussing mycophenolate. Let's get started. This is the Immunology Pharmacology Overview image, and you can see mycophenolate right here. This drug works by inhibiting the enzyme IMP dehydrogenase. This enzyme normally converts IMP, inosine monophosphate, into a functional purine. And remember, purines include adenine and guanine. And those purines can then be used in DNA replication, as you can see right here. Well, if IMP dehydrogenase is inhibited, then mycophenolate has effectively inhibited replication of T helper cells, which is how mycophenolate suppresses the immune response. Now let's help you memorize all the details about mycophenolate. Our story takes place in a fancy restaurant. At many restaurants, especially Indian restaurants, customers can grab some fennel seeds on their way out. And you can see here the owner's homegrown fennel seeds. So he's placed a sign here that reads, my fennel seeds. My fennel kind of sounds like mycophenolate which is the drug we're discussing here. Now, mycophenolate is often made in one of two preparations, mycophenolate mofetil or mycophenolate sodium. The active component is mycophenolate, so don't worry about the mofetil or sodium part. Just remember mycophenolate. As you can see, one ungrateful customer has obnoxiously grabbed a handful of the seeds and thrown them at the waiter. The waiter is standing next to this fancy statue of an imp. Imp, spelled I-M-P, stands for inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase. Mycophenolate actually blocked the action of IMP dehydrogenase. To help you remember this, we have the falling waiter smash and break part of the imp statue. Now notice that the waiter was holding a tray when he got hit. This fancy tray actually has the appearance of a purine. Just to remind you, this is what a purine looks like. It has two rings. Adenine and guanine are examples of purines. To reinforce the fact that this tray represents purines, we've added some fancy pure water resting in a pitcher on the tray. Anyways, Fennel seeds hitting the waiter and his purine-shaped tray of pure water represents the fact that mycophenolate inhibits purine synthesis. Mycophenolate inhibits the proliferation of B cells and T cells. To help you remember this, we have shown this imp statue carrying a T-shaped flail and has a bow and arrows on its back. We like to use T-shaped flails, a close combat weapon, to represent T cells, and the bow with its arrows to represent B cells and their antibodies and the antibodies they release. So mycophenolate prevents the proliferation of B and T cells. Unfortunately, this imp statue was hollow and some old trash had been placed inside it years ago. And now that the statue is breaking, you can see those nasty festering garbage particles launching into the air. Look at those nasty infectious particles. Anyways, this represents the fact that mycophenolate can cause infection, which makes sense. After all, mycophenolate is an immunosuppressant. When this statue cracked open, this poor customer was blasted with the most nauseating smell. Look at her green face. I think she's going to hurl. Well, this represents GI distress, another side effect of mycophenolate. Minding his own business, this kid here is just playing his mobile gaming device. He doesn't seem to notice what's going on around him, which frequently occurs with kids enthralled in a video game. Well, let's take a closer look. If you look closely at the screen, you can see he's playing out the battle between Megatronics and Optimum Prime. In the microbiology chapter, we use this scene with the Megatronics Transformer villain to represent invasive CMV infections which can occur in patients with mycophenolate. And again, CMV stands for cytomegalovirus. So megatronics, cytomegalovirus. Anyways, mycophenolate increases the risk of infections generally, as we pointed out earlier with those infectious particles in the air. But it's especially important to remember that mycophenolate can cause invasive CMV infections. Remember that kid throwing the fennel seeds? Well, he's got a comrade in his schemes. Look at this kid taking a fork and popping these festive balloons above the table. Well, we like to use balloons to represent blood cells. And as you can see, these balloons are variously colored. We have some red, some white, and some blue. So we're dealing with all types of blood cells here. And the fact that these balloons are popping represents pancytopenia. And pancytopenia is a potential side effect of mycophenolate. Now, one of those balloons popped right next to this customer's head. The poor guy obviously is in pain now. Look at him grab his head in agony. Well, this represents headaches, which are another potential side effect of mycophenolate. And the shock of that loud popping startled this customer causing him to knock over that bottle of oil. Now you can see the oil dripping everywhere, and oils are lipids. And this abundance of spilled oil represents hyperlipidemia, which is another side effect of mycophenolate. Now let's talk about when you should use mycophenolate. Looking over here, you can see the restaurant offers takeout. And you can see this lady has come to the table and is picking out the raw meat she wants to buy. So I guess she's going to buy the raw meat and make the food herself. Well, anyways, these organs she's trying to buy represent organs for organ transplants. And since mycophenolate suppresses the immune response of B and T cells, it can be used to suppress the immune system after patients receive an organ transplant. Now notice that this mother has brought along her little boy. 
Like many parents trying to keep their kids in line while dragging them through errands, this mother has supplied her boy with lots of Fruit Loops. You can see how much he's enjoying those Fruit Loops. Well, loops represent lupus. Some of the loop crumbs have even spread across his face in a distinctive pattern, much like the malar rash that occurs in lupus. And now notice that the mother, having picked out a raw kidney, is now passing it to her boy to hold while she continues shopping. And bringing these ideas together should help you remember that mycophenolate is used for lupus nephritis. And that should be all you need to know about mycophenolate.